Why? Because I realized I'd just been responsible for a TV first. I'd kicked a serving cabinet minister off a live program, unceremoniously and without hesitation. Later, I checked. Ass. I suspected, no one's ever done that before. Blimey. And not just any old low to middle ranking minister. Oh no a holder of one of the great offices of state, the defense. Secretary, no less. Booted off. Shown the red card. Terminated. I actually said, right. Okay. Interview terminated. Oh dear. Gavin Williamson was on to talk primarily about a mod scheme to send British soldiers to Malawi to help stop elephant poaches. Fine. My co-host Charlotte Hawkins and I praised the idea and the minister was happy to answer all our questions about it. Then we turned to Williamson's controversial statement after the Salisbury nerve agent attack. He had said that Russia should shut up and go away. Many thought that made him sound like a sulky pre-adolescent and he took a lot of flack over it. We played the shut up soundbite and then I asked to him politely if now he regretted it and agreed it sounded a bit too informal. Hardly a killer question but he totally evaded it, waffling on about the amazing job done by health staff in Salisbury. True, but not what I'd asked him. So I tried again, and again, and again. Each time, after the most explicit, simply warded question, the defense secretary brazenly obfuscated and sidestepped and flanneled. It was shameless blatant. He just wouldn't address the question at all. I gave it a last go. I'm asking this question not on my behalf, but on that of our viewers. So on behalf of those viewers, would you please answer the question? The question is, I'll try it one more time, do you regret using very casual, Trump-esque language like, shut up and go away? I really thought he'd give some semblance of an answer at last but no, yet more generalized waffle. Enough of this, I thought to myself. Snap decision time. Right. I interrupted. You're not going to answer, are you? Okay. Interview terminated. Judging by his expression, this was not the outcome our defense secretary was expecting. It wasn't the one I was expecting, either. I've been conducting live network TV interviews with politicians for over 30 years and I've never axed one from the program mid-interview. Neither, as far as I can discover, has any other interviewer. Had I gone too far? Not according to main media, social media and people on the street. I don't think I've ever done anything so popular on TV in my entire career. The response has been overwhelmingly positive and approving. People are sick to the back teeth of question-dodging politicians. If the only way to bring them up short is to kick them off the show, let's start doing it. I've got a new rule when one of them uses the tactics of evasion. Three strikes and you're out. Maybe if all us interviewers adopt that principle the quality of political debate on television will rapidly and dramatically improve. Hell, it's worth a try, blank, underscore J. Hi again everyone been on holiday for my birthday, long planned. So how miffed was I when I realized that on the day of the royal wedding I'd be thousands of miles away in the USA. These wonderful national celebrations bind us in such a joyous way and I was sad to miss watching it all live from my living room with a bottle of champagne. But I actually did manage to see it live, even though we were in Santa. Barbara in California is 8 hours behind UK time. Though Richard thought I was mad, I set my alarm for 3 a.m. and, leaving him snoozing in bed, I snuggled down in the sitting room of our cottage with a glass of sparkling wine and watched the lot, exchanging live emails with my kids back home. Actually one was on holiday with friends in France, where they decorated the garden with balloons and bunting and ice buckets of bubbly. Just one of my four offspring was uncontactable. The darling daughter was. 
actually right there at Windsor Castle, invited because her fiancé James Haskell is an England international rugby player and as such has been a friend of Rugamad Prince Harry for years. Still, though I knew Chloe was going, I nearly fell off my seat when I saw her on the TV screen, wearing a hat for the first time in her life. Of course I was tickled pink as her fascinator to see her there. But quite apart from maternal pride I did think the whole ceremony was practically perfect. In every way, the weather, how God-given was that? Azure skies and brilliant sunshine, the ancient stone of Windsor Castle glowing with archaic beauty, looking like a fairy tale, drawn by a Disney animator. And Harry and Meghan's obvious love for each other was as enchanting as the venue. That moment when he lifted her veil and she gazed at him with such glowing adoration made me want to cry. And indeed Harry, lovely Harry, the boy that every mother in the country has longed to cuddle and comfort. Ever since he walked behind his mother's casket when he was just twelve, looked himself completely overcome. I've never seen a groom so moved. It was surprising how many Americans Watch the wedding live. Of course Megan is a California girl and the Yanks we talked to were hugely impressed by the beauty and pageantry. The whole day was great. PR for the UK, and a lovely, healing balm to the heart in these difficult and fractious times blank, underscore J. I love this story about the ladies who gate crashed the men only bathing pond. I am steady. They were inspired by a mum's net campaign called Upside down gender world we now live in. The government is poised to introduce a balmy new initiative called the Gender Recognition Act. This could enable anyone to self identify as either a man or a woman just by saying so, enabling them to have access to areas designated male or female only. It's women who feel most cross. Nobody wants to see a hairy man in a lady's lavatory a single-sex sauna. It's threatening. Women rightly want to protect themselves from strange male glances at private moments. So the Hampstead ladies invaded the male bathing pool wearing fake bushy beards and even the mankini. Needless to say the blokes were not amused and called the police. I live near the heath. And the ponds are sacred to locals. There are ponds for men, ponds for women and mixed ponds for everyone. This is an amusing little episode but it's a foretaste of what may happen if the Gender Recognition Act is passed. Chaos. Private intimate spaces are male or female only for a good reason. Gender fluid people should campaign for their own spaces, not invade the privacy of those who are gender fixed. We don't need a new law. Just some common sense. Blank. J. Hugh Grant playing Jeremy Thorpe in a very English scandal is a revelation. Demonical, power-hungry, cruel and caring only for his own needs. Astonishingly Grant even contrives to look like Thorpe. He's got the liberal leader's facial tics and smirk down to a T. This role is a total departure from the floppy-haired charmer he usually plays. Recently Grant said playing romantic leads was over for him. He's too old. He wants the grisly, ugly parts now. Years ago we interviewed Leonardo DiCaprio who told us that the role of gorgeous